Jesus has victory and gladly gives us spiritual gifts. In Ephesians 4, 8, there it says, When he ascended on high, he led captive, captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So Jesus has ascended on high and he had led Satan and all the power captive. He has uh, taken, all, taken over all the spiritual gifts, all power, and he will give spiritual gifts to people. So we can do different things. This is just a picture to illustrate that we can have different ability to do different things. So it's God's will. And also in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 uh, to 10, there is talk about the different spiritual gifts, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working on miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, and different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And I'm going to explain this one by one, okay? Now, first is word of wisdom. That means the words uh, of, to help others to apply wisdom in life and ministry. That we can, that give, God can give us wisdom that we can uh, say to other people to help them ex apply wisdom in life and ministry. For instance, some people have problems in the family life, in the personal life. When we have the wisdom of God, then we can help people to have the wisdom to take care of the family's uh, problems in the family, take care of problems in the church, in the daily life. So that's the words, words of wisdom that we can apply the biblical truth in real situation. For instance, many people, they get angry. That is not, that is not wisdom because anger will only dis, uh, make things worse. Anger doesn't take care of problems. So, but many people just let anger control the life. Then they are not living in wisdom. We need to live in wisdom to let God take care of our life. And then word of knowledge. Now first it could mean having abundant biblical knowledge and other useful information, useful knowledge. Okay, so, so those uh, knowledge of the Bible and also other useful information. And then also knowing something about someone or a situation supernaturally, especially for ministry. That means that we can know uh, the problem of some per a person, uh, maybe his what he's facing, his what are his underlying problems, what are affecting him. So all this problem, uh, you know. So when a person has this uh, word of knowledge, gift that he knows about the needs of people, and then they can say the right thing to help these people. So that is a good gift that we can use if we have this gift. But we need to discern and also need to, you know, to test whether it's accurate or not. Now, if someone, you know, can say a word of wisdom, uh, knowledge in a certain situation, it doesn't mean that he can do that all the time. So he has to test it many times. So he pray for different people. And then he has received a word that he sends a an idea come to his mind or hear a voice from God. Then he will tell this person, uh, this idea came to me. I heard this voice come to me that says this certain thing. Is this true? So he'll find out. Now he can ask the pastor to help him to discern whether he has the word of knowledge. And if he does, then, okay, next time he'll try again and try again. And then until he becomes very sure I have seen people, they, you know, in a rush, they say that they are prophets, they have the word of knowledge, and then what they say is not accurate. Uh, because they, you know, they just, they just want to have the gift, but they really never test it. And so they, um, they really don't have that gift, and it, it will, you know, it ruin the ministry. Okay, one time, there was a pastor, you know, now I did not know this pastor myself, but another pastor invited him to her church. 
and she also asked me to go so I went there and then this uh, pastor who came didn't did not know that I was a pastor and when he prayed for me he said uh, stop beating your parents and I asked and I said to him I never beat my parents I never said anything not nice to them I was always nice to them and and they have passed away already and this person you know got a totally wrong message and so he is not suitable to be called a prophet or a person to have the gift of the word of knowledge but he went around and you know and uh, and go to churches and say I have this gift I want to use it in your church so it's very important that we test it first that we should not you know just rush to use this gift and some people really don't have this gift they just look at a person and they think you know he saw that I I'm tall and strong and think that I'm tall and strong I would beat my parents that's you know that's not true at all so that's that's something you know we don't want to happen in our ministry and then faith now here faith doesn't mean saving faith this is a spiritual gift this is faith that God can do something supernatural in difficult situation that we have the faith that for instance that we have the faith that uh, God can perform miracles we have the faith that God can solve this problem God can open a way for us so this is a uh, the fa uh, you know faith uh, in difficult situation and then gifts of healing bring bodily or inner healing to people that they can pray for people to be healed and to have inner healing and so this is very very good now for me the first time I experience this is after I experienced the Holy Spirit a few months later uh, there was a church that invited me to go to preach and I said to the pastor I have experienced the Holy Spirit can I lay hand on your members he said it's fine but you need to go to the uh, next room after the service you go to the next room and then see who is willing to come and then you lay hand on them so uh, some of them went about 20 of them and I lay hand on them one by one now at that time I was I was uh, still not very sensitive to the work of the Holy Spirit now if I'm sensitive to the work of Holy Spirit when I pray for people I already knew something has happened but at that time I did not know that and then um, after I finished I asked the people did you experience anything and then a woman jumped up and 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 moved his arm and said my shoulder pain went away and another woman jumped up and said her backache went away and then another woman said that she had evil spirit so we try to uh, so I, I uh, we try to drive out the demons from the woman so that was the first time that in my ministry that I saw people experience healing right away and also saw that when I lay hand on people some people who have evil spirit immediately the Holy uh, the evil spirit will come up because the evil spirit cannot stand the presence of the Holy Spirit so we can have this gift and the more we exercise that the more we can experience uh, miracles and, and it's really helpful so I hope that we all use that and then in March 16 it says that you know this signs will follow those who believe that they lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed so it's for all Christians and not it's not just a pastor now some pastor they did not encourage the members to lay hand on people now one one thinking is this they think that if they lay hand on people uh, if they have evil spirit they can uh, pass the evil spirit to other people or if the person being laid hand on has evil spirit and the evil spirit is passed back to him and so uh, you know the, uh, they discourage uh, members lay people to lay hand on people now but Jesus mind is that he says signs will follow those who believe he did not say signs will follow the pastors 
it's not just the pastors. Now, if all the members have miracles, or maybe one third of the members or half the members have miracles, and they go and pray for people and have miracles, they will bring many people back to the church. And many people did not realize that. Now, as far as the evil spirit, if we have a close relationship with God and take care of all the problems in our life, including sins and negative thinking and negative emotions and, and being affected by people and anything, any negative uh, uh, you know, lifestyle, pessimism, anything like this, any uh, problem in relationship, we take care of all this then we don't have to worry about evil spirit when we have a close relationship with God and then we take care of all our problems we don't have to worry about evil spirit but some people say well um, it's too hard to be perfect then I'll say if we have any sin immediately we try to take care of that and ask God to forgive us right away so that's the key don't let the sinful thought become action Whenever we have any greed, lust, anger, frustration, immediately we take care of that and say, I don't have to be frustrated. I don't have to be angry. I don't have to live in sin. So we, we tell ourselves, we don't have to live in sin. Then immediately we take care of the sin uh, right away. So that is wise. And uh, then we don't have to worry about evil spirit. So I, I don't worry about evil spirit. And I tell people, Okay, have a close relationship with God and take care of, of all your problems. Now, even if the person, the other person you lay hand on has evil spirit, and then with the presence of God, the evil spirit will go away. Now, if it does, if the evil spirit does attack you, you just keep praying, praying, and then the evil spirit will also leave you when you have a good relationship with God. So, I want to train people to have a good relationship with God and take care of all problems and not to be controlled by greed especially the greed of money now I'm you know I, I've uh, worked with African pastors and I I noticed that <clears throat> because of poverty some of these pastors are not faithful in the handling of money and I'm sad to see that and I hope that they will <clears throat> excuse me I hope that they will truly repent and not to let the greed for money control them because if they do that even if I don't discover that God knows that and the ministry is in vain even their spiritual their eternal life can be at risk so it's not worthy to be greedy for money and then lose salvation or lose the fruit of the ministry so uh, I encourage all of you to really take care of your life and don't have any greed that all the money is used properly and never steal money that doesn't belong to you. And when you love God and obey God, God will provide for you. We don't need to you know, use special method to earn money, to gain money. Now, if the church, if your ministry doesn't have any income at all, it's okay to work part-time uh, to support yourself. It's like, uh, it's like Paul, he was the tent maker. It's okay. It's not a sin to have a secular job to support your ministry. But never, never steal money from the ministry. Or the money I give to some groups to buy equipment, never steal any of the money. It, it's going to destroy your life. So I hope that we all you know, love God and obey God and not let any sin control us. Because if we let any sin control us, we'll lose much more than the money we get. We'll lose much more. Now, after I experience the Holy Spirit, I, I, I know that it's very, very important that I don't let any sin control me. It's very, very important. If I let any sin control me, it will bring, it will lead to destruction. So, so I, you know, encourage you all to train your members to first to love God, to open the heart, to experience the Holy Spirit. When we love God together, 
worship God together. And when we feel the presence of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the joy of the Lord, or the swing of the body, or the falling down under the power of the Holy Spirit, all these are the signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit. When we experience this, we want to keep this presence. We want to keep this presence. And the stronger the presence is, the more anointing we have. And then we pray for people, they'll be healed. And also we want to take care of any sins. And then we can train a number of people that they, you know, they, they can pray for people in a church. Now, actually, I want to train everyone. But there are some people that I see that they have some sins, they have some problems, the emotional problem, or uh, evil spirit. Now, if they have evil spirit, for sure, I will cast out the evil spirit. Now, normally, the evil spirit will leave uh, when we cast out the evil spirit. It's only when people, they don't, um, they don't uh, obey God. They have anger, frustration, unforgiveness, and then the evil spirit will refuse to leave. So we need to help the person, counsel the person to take care of these problems. And then the evil spirit will leave. And then we, we don't have to worry about them laying hands on other people. And also, even the, if there are people who have evil spirit, they don't have to worry about that. Okay, and then the working on miracles. Different kinds of miracles. Now, it include like, uh, like Jesus did, you know, that he feed 5,000 with uh, five loaves and two fish. Now, there was a uh, missionary, Heidi Baker. Sh she went to Africa and she did not have, uh, you know, she had many people supporting her, but sometimes she did not have enough money and then they have little food, but then they divided the food and it was just a little you know, a small amount of food. Someone brought some food to her and thought that the family just have a few members and just brought the food for uh, four people. And then she said, my family is very large. And there were thousands of orphans. <clears throat> and they break the food and s divide it with the people, uh, among the people, and they have enough. So Jesus said, you know, the things I've done, those who believe will also do, and even they can do greater things. Now, Jesus did not say they can do better things. They, no one can do better things than Jesus. But there are some people who do greater things. For instance, some evangelists have millions of people in their meetings, and they have meetings every week. So they have reached many more people than Jesus. So it's a greater ministry, I, I mean a bigger ministry, but not a better ministry. Jesus' ministry is best, better than anyone else's ministry. So whatever Jesus has done, any miracles, like uh, Philip, after he baptized a eunuch, he was taken up to another place. So now in a situation when we are persecuted, God can do that too. So we entrust our lives to God and say, God, you can take me away from this place. Now, if you don't take me away from this place, you can take away the pain when they, when they beat me uh, and you can keep me healthy. But if not, it's fine. If I die, I'll go to you. And so I just trust that you will protect me. And, and if your plan is that now is the time for me to die, it's okay too, because I will go to you. And uh, so we can trust in God's goodness. And then when we are persecuted, we can move, you know, ask God to move the mountains. Remember, the miracles comes from God. So it's not us moving the mountain. It's in Jesus' name that God moved the mountain. Or we can walk on water. Or uh, walk through the people like Jesus did. You know, people try to push him down a hill and then he just walk, walked through them. You know, how can you walk through a crowd who is trying to push you down? But Jesus could walk through them. And so Jesus performed mir different miracles. And we too, if God wants us to be able to perform those miracles, when we have the faith in the most difficult situ situation that can happen. And then prophecy. That, uh, that we can prophesy the future or waking up people to God's guidance to a situation. So prophecy could mean prophesying the future or 
telling the people like the prophets in the Old Testament about their sins, about what they should do. So that is a, a, the gift of prophecy. That is the work of a prophet to speak to the people. And discerning of spirit, discerning evil spirit. That people have these gifts, they will know who has evil spirit. And they also will know uh, what kind of evil spirit they have. And then different kinds of tongues, speaking tongues from God for edific edification of oneself or speaking mysteries. That's what 1 Corinthians 14 says that, that uh, it's those who speak in tongues are speaking mysteries and also they are edifying themselves. So speaking in tongues is good for ourselves, that, that we can speak uh, to build up ourselves. Now it's very important that we don't tell people to try to mimic speaking in tongue. Now there are people who in many meetings they tell the people try to speak in tongue. We should never do that. Because when we do that, that the people are never sure whether they are speaking in tongue or whether it's just they are mimicking and learn the habit of speaking in tongue. So we should never tell the people to try to speak in tongue. We just tell the people to to love God, to worship God, to love Him and praise Him. And then if the tongues come, that's great. We praise God for that. So we want to do that. We want to praise God and let uh, the speaking in tongues just come by itself. Now for me, the first time I started, started to speak in tongues was when one time I went to a meeting and the pastor that led the meeting went down stage and I was behind him. And one of my members was in front of him. Now that member spoke in tongue before me because he spoke in tongue in another meeting before I experienced uh, the Holy Spirit. And this pastor said to him, speak in tongue. Now for some reason he knew that this, this Christian spoke, uh, speaks in tongue. So he told him to speak in tongue. And then the moment he said that, I was behind him immediately my tongue start to move, my lips start to move. So that's, that's something that came supernaturally. He never told me to speak in tongue, and I never tried to speak in tongue, but my, immediately my mouth and my tongue start to move. And I have also prayed for different people, and they experience the Holy Spirit, and then they start to speak in tongue. So that's something that can happen, that we want to want people concentrate in God and not concentrating in speaking in tongue. There are many people, they just say, I want to speak in tongue. The mind should be concentrated in loving God. I want to love God. I want to worship God. I want to obey God. I want to uh, serve God. I want to have a close relationship with God. So that should be in our heart. But many people just pay attention to power, to spiritual gift, and speaking in tongues. We should pay attention to, to uh, the relationship with God, not to the manifestation, not to the spiritual gifts. It's very important that the spiritual gifts are for serving God. Those are not our goal. Now, but many people just say, I want the gift of healing. They will say, oh, if I have the gift of healing and I pray for people that heal, oh, then I'll have a big ministry. Now, then they are looking at themselves. I want to have a big ministry. Now, it's not wrong to have a big ministry, but we should say, then I can bless many people and many people can be blessed. And I also, I can raise, uh, raise up the spiritual life and re bring revival to them. And then we can bring a revival to the area and glorify God. Then he's concentrating in blessing the people and glorifying God and not concentrating in, I will have a big ministry. Now, many people just want a big ministry so that they will look good. So we don't serve God so that we look, we look good. We serve God to glorify God and to bless people. And then the interpretation of tongues. Now, I found that not many people have this gift, but there are people who have this gift. Uh, one time, I, I, I met someone who has this gift. And, and then I said, can you interpret my tongue? And then she said to me, you, you know, I was speaking in tongue, but she said, you kept saying, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. So my tongue at that time was always, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm.